Hi everybody, it's Wendy here from Little Nest Crafts. Welcome to my channel. I'm glad that you can join me today. And um, this video is just to introduce a little kit I've made for anybody who wants to do some fabric samples for their journals. Um, they're nice little uh, added extra ephemera pieces that you can um, pop in, you know, to your into your journal and. Uh, help it match with the you know the project that you're doing so what I've done is I've produced a kit and um, it's consisting of eight uh, A4 pages and on each page you've got three um, tops and two uh, two backs um, and they are varying designs so what I've done is I've pre-prepped the other two designs so you've got um, two that are sort of uh, on a grey scale um, with more details on and it says um, uh, and they're based on originals um, so you've got uh, the little squares where you can put your fabric samples and it uh, you know has got some script on it as well and the backs have got uh, newspaper script on the back on those and then you've got two tops like that and I'll, I've, I've cut round them and I've inked round them and I'll show you what we do with those and then you've got these two which are based on uh, coffee dyed or tea dyed paper and you've got the tea stains on the back you know the tea rings on the back of those two and these are um, Obon Marsh, they're French uh, labels, and then you've got these um, Albert, Melee, and C of Paris uh, labels on those. So basically, you cut round them, and as I say, I've, I've pre done those two. Uh, so I'll do this one um, quickly when I can find my scissors, and um, I'll show you what we do. So I hope that you're all well and uh, we're having a nice day here today um, and it was quite pleasant yesterday as well here in South Wales. Um, the day before we had absolute torrential rain um, for about 24 hours everywhere. It was absolutely sodden um, and we're in the process of doing a bit of household work. Um, the plan was we were we were going to pack all the ground floor of the house up because we we're having our wooden floors sanded back um, to remove all the stains and, and uh, just to make them look a bit fresher. So we packed up everything into boxes which are outside in the garden. Uh, luckily my neighbour um, who's got his own business has got some big packing crates and um, they're waterproof otherwise I don't know what we we would have done because the guy who was supposed to be doing the flooring um, contacted us the day before he was supposed to arrive to say something had come up and he he couldn't actually do it for three weeks so um, you know we've got uh, my husband's got no tv um, our lounge is bare apart from the chairs, the sofas and uh, the dog bed and um, yeah so we're, we're, all, <laughs> we're all upside down. Thankfully I didn't pack my craft room so I've been still been able to do a little bit um, but next week I'm going to have to pack up my craft room too because they're going to be sanding the floors in here as well. Um, well, I call it a craft room. It's not a craft room, really. It's my dining room. I haven't got a craft room as such. Although my husband says we've got a craft, craft room and we haven't got a dining room anymore. Um, so unfortunately, when we have anybody for dinner, I have to pack everything up and then get it all back out again, which is a bit of a pain. But um, there we are. It is what it is as they say I think that's the favorite saying of the uh, year 
everybody I speak to, whenever they say anything, it's, they say it. it is what it is. So I'll just get rid of these pieces and we'll carry on. So in, in order to do this project, what you what you need is some scissors, obviously, for, for cutting out. You need your ink if you like to ink. Some people don't, but I do like to ink round my edges a little bit. Um, I'll do that quickly. This one's got um, some core citry and hats on the back of this one. I try to put, uh, you know, some fashion related because it's uh, material. These are material swatches. So that's that one. And then we'll do the same with this one. And then you'll also need some brads. Um, in order for you to put put these together. And it's just a quick little project. You know, if you're if you're busy and you haven't really got time and you want to do some mass making of ephemera for things that are quick are quick to make then these are nice little projects and they they do look great in your journals and it's fantastic as well for using up your scraps now I've put three of these in because you might want to make some backs of your own design so um, on each of the kits you'll get three of these but you'll only get two backs because obviously you can use um, plain card I do suggest that you you know don't use copier paper because it won't take the weight of your fabrics and um, no need to ink the other sides because they're going to be inside the um, swatches so you need to get some material an ideal way of using up little scraps but what I've got here are some um, swatches uh, when I was looking for some curtain fabric and uh, I thought this would be an ideal uh, to use up some of these um, nice fabrics there and you need a really good pair of sharp scissors or some pinking shears and I've got some pinking shears here so let's have a look what we've got these ones are designed that you can um, just take a piece of your fabric and what I'm going to do there is just cut along the try and keep it straight if I can. your fabric piece there and then you get one of your toppers and fold it in half and then just ink there and at the back And then what I've done is I've I've marked where you can put your brads. Now then, I just need my little pokey tool, which is over here. Now then, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put a spot of 
glue underneath there just to hold it in place. Stop it sliding around while I'm working on it. So I've got my Beacon 3 and 1 and I'm just going to pop that on there a minute. And then with my pokey tool, I'm just going to make my holes. And I'm not going to go right up to the crease there so that it's not being impeded. And then if I poke the holes through again and then I've got I've got some brads here but looking at those I think they're really big so I've got a pack of smaller brads here but I haven't really got much in the way of I suppose I could use some red ones with it being red this red being in the fabric here so let's have a look. Oops, a daisy. I'm losing my dexterity in my fingers. And these feel really fiddly because they're small. So we're going to go through there. And get it through the fabric. What you could do as well, I think, is actually um, glue these on to the back to stop it sliding so that you get your your top properly aligned with the with the bottom. So there we go. I think that looks fairly straight and then realign it because it was slightly off centre there. So try again. There we are, that's much better. And then I'm just going to use my pokey tool to split the pin. And then I'm going to turn it a little bit as well. just so that it's not showing when I close the card down. So there we go. I'm going to do this one as well. Get the next little split pin. And we'll Turn that round. Just twizzle that round there. And then, if you've got rusty um, staplers, you can staple it down there as is. we go just to make it look more authentic oh it's actually come right through the back but never mind there we are I maybe should have just stapled the top layer rather than have that but not to worry so there's your one fabric sample and you know when you've got your journal page um, you know, it fits nicely on a, on a journal page. You can tuck it in a pocket. Um, or if you didn't want to staple this, you could use it as a flap. Say this is your journal page. You could hang it over your over the top of your journal page. 
and then you you can write underneath there then you know it's like a hidden um a hidden uh, writing spot so we'll do one of the other ones i'll just pop that to one side for a second and we'll go on to one of these now when you look at these, if you if I hold it closer to the screen, you can put a fabric sample up here, which is what they do on the originals when you look at the original. And then you've got some little squares and I haven't put lines around them, but you can see the difference in the shading there and a sample there and two samples at the bottom. So what I'll do is I'll put that to one side, move that and then we'll take a little selection of these uh, fabrics here so I'll get a little and as I say they're great for using scraps of fabric Oops a daisy let me just straighten that and then with your fab attack there's one and then we'll another one I'll try and make them roughly the same size it that way seeing as the pattern's going that way and then I'll take a sample of this one maybe get a piece with Another piece. 
piece. Um, I'll go back to this velvet one, I think. And I'll cut a square out. Let's have a look. To think maybe like so. generous with the glue as usual and then lastly we've got the two little squares down here but you don't have to fill all the squares if you don't want to um, but seeing as we've got them I suppose I could take a little piece off here no I'm not going to do that um, I've got this piece here. Uh, what I did, I went into a shop and asked them if they were, had got any old fabric swatches. And um, that they were getting rid of. And I got these. I was going to use them for binding journals with but um, quite difficult to get the the backing of these so I've got two little areas down the bottom that I can use let's have a look just take some little samples maybe from here while well, they've got Sedate, just clear the decks. Got a little one there. this one because it's got that on the front unless I can peel it off yeah that's okay let's have a look yeah that'll do So great, as I say, for using up your scrap fabrics um, where you've got little pieces. Um, I'll just move those out of the way. And then we'll get the top. And fold this over. Just ink the back and the front. I'll just make sure that that's straight. requiring another piece at the top there or you can do that and 
I think that's all I'm going to do. I'm not going to put any more fabric up there behind. So I think what I will do first is staple that onto there. And then we can get our back down. Now with this one, you're not doing a flap. So it's up to you whether you, I think for authenticity, I'm going to make my holes and put a couple of brads in and I'll use some red ones the same as I did previously. One, two, put that one back before I get any more escapees. So, for those of you that watch regularly, um, you know that my puppy has had surgery and we're waiting on the results of the biopsies they took. Um, Jasper's was a year old on September the 3rd this year. And while we were away in France, for those of you who don't know, he developed a lump in his neck. So as soon as we got back, we um, booked him in the vets and he had a biopsy taken, which showed abnormal cells, but they wanted to get a bigger sample. So he actually went in for surgery to have the lymph gland removed because initially they weren't sure whether it was a lymph gland or a salivary gland. And um, so he's had that removed and we're waiting on histology now. So we went yesterday to the vets so he could have the external stitches because what they did, they put a subcutaneous stitch in that's dissolvable. And... Um, there we go. So, you can ink, ink it down just to tone it down a little bit. And yeah, so going back to that, we went to have the stitches out yesterday in the hope as well that some of the results would be back. But unfortunately, nothing's uh, back as yet. So we're still sitting on tender hooks to see what it is but um, yeah so please keep us in your prayers and uh, I shall keep you posted so that's the little digital kit there so you've got three um, samples as I say you've got that Bon Marsh one you've got a creamy Bon Marsh one which is this one here, which will make another sample. So you can either, that's got the tea stained on the back. So you can either do a long flip like that one, which I think I'm going to do with this piece of fabric here. We'll take a sample of this one here um, if I put that on there like so because trying to cut in a straight line for me is nigh on impossible as you'll see <laughs> now. Mm. 
normally I just tear the fabric straight as you can see there we are Let's put the fabric the right way up and then cut that bit off along there I can use that on one of the other samples and then we'll do the same again we'll get our uh, Faber, uh, Beacon 3 just glue that down there and I'm going to leave that on because it makes it look a bit more authentic when you lift the flap probably won't see that much but it's got the fabric piece on it there And then we'll staple the front. Like so. And then you can glue the back or you can do the same again and put your um, put your brads through so what colours have we got in there I could use green ones on this one or these brownie ones maybe they look yeah they look okay probably won't ever use them in anything else Have a look. I just want to be careful that I'm not going to make a hole all the way through to the front. So that's one. round again so you can't see it from the front and the same with this side Same again, just twist the brad round. And there we are. So let me clear the decks a little bit. So we can see where we are. There we are. Okay. So I do hope you like this little kit. Um, as I say, it's got endless possibilities. As I say, you can write on there. And if you don't glue them in, you've got writing space on the back as well. And um, yeah, quick and simple. So I shall love you and leave you. And um, I hope that you have 
a good weekend. It's Friday here and uh, I hope you're having better weather and that everybody is safe and well. And until my next video, uh, I'll look forward to seeing you then. So take care of yourselves, everybody, and I'll say bye for now. Bye.